All right then, gang, so I've already opened up VS Code and I've got a brand new project, a folder called Webpack TypeScript, nothing in there at the minute. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create or initialize a new TypeScript project. Now, to do that, we say TSC and we need TypeScript installed globally on our computer in order to do this. Remember, if you don't know how to do that, check out the tutorial series all about TypeScript. The link is down below and then double dash and init and this initializes us with a TypeScript config file right here. So inside this config file we can specify different options about how TypeScript is going to work. The only two things I'm going to do is change the target property to ES6 and that means that the output JavaScript that we're going to get at the end is going to follow along with the ES6 specification and I want to say that the module system that we're going to use is going to be the ES2015 specification as well. So that's all I'm going to do inside that config file. The next thing I want to do is initialize a package.json file to keep track of all of our dependencies because we need to install a few dependencies for Webpack. So to do that, I'm going to say npm init and then press enter. And then down here, I'm just going to enter through all of the different questions it's asking me right here. The entry point will be index.js. Uh, enter through the rest. That's absolutely fine. You can fill these in if you wish. But for me, that's absolutely fine. And now we get this package.json file. And whenever we're using npm to install different packages, we typically create this package.json file first of all to keep track of those dependencies that we install. So speaking of dependencies, we want to install Webpack as a dependency to this project and also a couple of other things as well. So to do that, we'll say npm install and it's going to be Webpack first of all. We also want to install the Webpack CLI and that's going to be how we interact with Webpack via the command line interface. Then we want to also install TS Loader and that is going to be something that we use later on as well. So we want to save all of these to our dev dependencies so that they're tracked inside package.json and to do that we can say hyphen capital D and that saves them to the dev dependencies. So Webpack, that package, is going to be the core Webpack package that ultimately compiles and bundles all of our code together. The Webpack CLI is going to be a tool that allows us to run Webpack commands from the command line. And the TS Loader is a package that teaches Webpack how to compile TypeScript into JavaScript. And without it, it wouldn't be able to do that. So now we can see that we have a node modules folder and a package lock file right there as well. Now all of the dependencies we just installed are going to live inside this node modules folder. We don't need to go in there and edit anything directly. That's just where they live. Now this package lock file just locks in our dependencies for us. We don't need to go into that file and do anything with that either. But if we go into the package.json file, we can see now we have this property called dev dependencies and that is listing these three packages we just installed right here. Now, you should also install TypeScript locally for your project as a dev dependency too, for Webpack to work with it properly, even though we have it installed globally on our computer. So to do that, I'm going to say npm install TypeScript, and then I'm going to add that as a dev dependency too. Press enter to install that locally for this project as a dev dependency. So there we go. That's that installed as well. So this package.json file is keeping track of all of the dependencies we use as well as store information about other things in our project as well, such as the scripts, and we'll come to that later on. For now though, we don't need to do anything more with it. So now we've installed Webpack and the other packages that we're going to need over the next couple of lessons. Now let's create a folder structure for our project. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder for the source files inside this project. So all of our source code is going to live inside this folder right here, the TypeScript files that I'm going to be creating. So when I'm writing code for this project, I'll only ever be writing code in files inside this source folder. That is the source code. Now, I also need to create another folder which is going to contain all of my final JavaScript, any final CSS and HTML, which will then be ready for deploying to the web. So to do that, I'm going to create another folder called public, but you might also see this being called dist or something else. But ultimately, this folder will contain all of our final files and it will be the folder uploaded to a web server to host the website. 
Now, it should probably contain at least one HTML file since that is the backbone of a website. So what I'm gonna do is create a new file inside that called index dot html and inside here i'll say doc and tab and that creates me this mini boilerplate and what i'm actually going to do is just copy and paste all of the content from my repo in here so you don't have to watch me write out html so let me paste that in dead dead simple all this is is an h1 right here then a form with three labels and three inputs one for name one for email and one for age and we have a button at the bottom to submit it. Now, I'm also gonna change this title right here to Webpack and TypeScript, like so, and that is our HTML file done. So that is pretty much it as far as the initial setup is concerned. In fact, I will just add one more file inside this source folder right here, new file, and we'll call this index.ts. So remember, TS is the extension we use for TypeScript files, and all of our TypeScript files are gonna live inside this source folder, right? So the way this will work is as follows. We're gonna write all of our code inside the source folder. So anything TypeScript is gonna go inside this source folder right here. Webpack is then later gonna take those files and compile them into a single JavaScript bundle. And it's then gonna output that single bundle inside the public folder right here. So we might have then something like bundle.js inside this public folder. And that is gonna be then ready to deploy to the web. And then the index file right here can later link to that bundle.js file. So now we have the bare bones set up. In the next lesson, we're gonna create a webpack file to start this whole process.